Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Between Paychecks Kitchen. I'm Oz, or Oz the Gray, as it may be. And we're coming to you partially from my shitty little apartment kitchen. Uh, I'm going camping, so I'm, this is going to be the first of my videos of camping stuff. I ask what everybody likes to do, and a lot of people pre-cook stuff, take it out there where they can reheat it. Uh, I'm going to do that for the breakfast thing, because nobody wants to crawl out of a tent first thing in the morning and have to go cook a whole bunch of shit. So just start a fire, put this next to it, and we're good. So I'm going to show you how I pre-cook it here, how I package it, and how I reheat it out there, so we'll pick this up out there after we're done here. Uh, this is supposed to be great. It's kind of a retread of one of our breakfast things, and we're kind of mashing it with another breakfast thing we did. So this will be great. Before we start, be sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do the YouTube stuff. Check out our merch site. Link will be down in the description, man. Check this out. This is pretty cool. You can get an apron, check out some of our other merch, and let's just get right into it. So this is all the stuff you're going to need. Now I'm going to show you two things. First, uh, you want your English muffins. These are all one piece. I'll show you that. You're going to need some eggs and some chorizo. Pork, beef, it's up to you. I think these are all pork anyway. Uh, I didn't want to mix my meats. Now you're going to need pork sausage or your bacon. Uh, we can't do both because of the budget. Uh, so make sure those are nice and thawed and I'll show you how to get into those. Uh, that's all you need for the food. But you're going to need some of the... Uh, Ziploc bags and some aluminum foil. Uh, Ziploc bags mostly because I can't wrap the foil properly to uh, keep it sealed. So get you a skillet, put it at about medium at the most. Uh, I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and put those in there. Let those nice and warm up. Now we're going to put the chorizo in it, and I apologize here, folks. Uh, uh, it's it's a lot. It's it's an animal byproduct kind of thing with some uh, spices and stuff, but it's not going to look good as it drops into your pan. Okay, uh, yeah, so, oh, ignore the smoke coming off the side of my skillet there. <laughs> uh, so immediately get you a wooden spoon to break this up so you don't lose your appetite and get it nice and beat around. Now, the trick to the chorizo, you need to keep stirring it, right? If you leave it sitting for too long, it'll stick to the bottom, and if it starts sticking too much, you need to turn the heat down. I ended up turning mine down to, uh, medium low to low, just to kind of cook this, but you break it up and see how it's kind of clumped together. Uh, and there's grease around the outside of it. Uh, this is how you're able to do your eggs before your bacon or sausage Because it's got a lot of grease in it. So once it spins about two three minutes get knocked around you see here Where it's not quite the congealed it's, it lumps and it's got all the grease around the edges Now you're good to do your eggs. So that'd be about three or five minutes of that depends on your food So I went ahead and added six eggs to this one Now I'm going to show you something here something I've always talked about if you're breaking an egg and you happen to drop a shell in there, don't worry about it. Or a piece of shell. Just go ahead and pick it up and throw it down. You're good. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just kind of like life. As long as it gets in there, it doesn't have to be perfect to go ahead and get it back out, right? So uh, go ahead and just get in there. Put all. I put six eggs in here. Now, uh, I'm not a fan of eggs, but I am a fan of chorizo. So that's why I only used egg uh, six. You can use more. You can use less. It's up to you. Now, get you a spoon. Go to whacking these yolks around. Uh, you're basically making uh, scrambled eggs with chorizo in it. That's all, that's all this is. So go ahead and start stirring it around. Get it nice and mixed in and everything. Your chorizo is almost fully cooked when you put it in there, right? After like three to five minutes of cooking it down and letting it break down. So now it's going to be fully cooked when the eggs are done. So you want to keep stirring it. This is scrambled eggs. Like we've done this before. The trick with the scrambled eggs is not to let it sit on the skillet too hard. Or it'll bake hard. It's just the big chunks of uh, egg, basically, right? So go ahead and keep stirring it, keep doing it around you. And as it's going, those eggs will soak up that grease. So that runny grease that you saw earlier, I didn't drain it. That's just stirred and soaked up by that stuff. So just go ahead and keep it stirred. And it's going to keep going until the uh, the eggs aren't runny. Like there's not runny white or yellow spots in the eggs. So it'll take you about two to three minutes, I think is what it's sped through here, until it's cooked down. Then go ahead and pull that off and remove it from heat. And let's get into the meats. So, medium, medium high, put the meat on the metal. Uh, I'm doing my bacon, you can see I'm using two or three slices per. Here, just kind of speed up my cooking because I'm trying to pack the beef for this trip in the morning. Uh, <laughs> so I go ahead and cook them all in here. Now my bacon, I don't do overly hard. I'm not a fan of overcooked bacon or crunchy or crispy bacon. I always just feel like it's burnt. If you have a steak and you bite into it and it crunches, that steak is fucking burnt, okay? So that's kind of my bacon rant. Uh, so I cook this right now. Uh, anytime you're in the middle of the skillet, it's going to get more heat. So I have one of these that's got three. So go ahead and uh, you know, keep flipping these. But you can go ahead and move the one that's got the bigger parts or the more slices to it. Go ahead and move it to the middle. That's what I'm doing right here. Because uh, it's going to get more heat and cook through that. If you're stacking it, uh, just two, you're fine as long as it'll cook and it'll get to the right temperature. Uh, cook any further than this, you don't have to worry about that. I, I do it when it's nice and chewy. 
<laughs> or uh, my girlfriend used to call it a meat bubble gum uh, is how I look at it. So get your uh, stuff here after three or five minutes of that cooking that. Pull it off, put it on your secret uh, weapon, your paper towel on your plate there. Make George Foreman grill look sad. So your sausage is going to be a completely different thing. Because remember, you're doing one or the other here. You don't want to, you can't, we can't afford to do both. So make you a patty, but make it as skinny as possible and round enough. You want to kind of measure it to your English muffin. You want it to fit that thing. Now remember, sausage and hamburger and any of the ground meats will shrink up. They'll uh, shrivel to get smaller. See how it's completely filled in the thing here? Uh, with three of them, when we're done cooking, you'll see how small they got. Uh, so I keep flipping them over. They're pork and they're high-end stuff, so they're not going to turn all gray or all brown. They're going to turn like this, you know, really high white color with brown edges is what you're trying to you're cook it with. It. So go ahead and uh, flip those over after about uh, four to five minutes on each side. It's pork. You want to make sure it's nice and cooked all the way through. Uh, this stuff kind of threw me because I'm used to using a really broke <laughs> sausage stuff. See how small these shriveled up too? Like these are the same ones that we started cooking with. So once you get that nice brown color with just a little bit of white in the background, that's pork, white meat, cooked all the way through because it's white. You're good. Uh, let's say window to weight gain. If you can see through the paper towel on your plate, go ahead and uh, pull those off the heat. Now, English muffin, it's one piece. You gotta make it into two. Right, so just go ahead and uh, just cut it in half. Get your nice sharp knife. Shout out to Andy. He, I was actually to do this without cutting my finger off, which was nice. Um, Andy got me these knives and they really helped out. Uh, you don't want to saw them. This is the first knife I've used on bread that wasn't serrated, so I feel bad. So I'm going to show you how to dress and pack these. Get you some aluminum foil. It'll fit when it's rolled over, so you want to measure it within. Uh, split your English muffin and then put some of your eggs and chorizo on one side. Now, because you cooked it, it's going to be in like crumble, uh, crumbles, right? Like, uh, like scrambled eggs. So it's not going to be that right, but it sticks pretty good. Uh, so don't worry about it too much. Then get your bacon. Uh, I ended up making bacon X's here. I'm a child of the nineties. Shout out to my X-Men and all, <laughs> all my Marvel fans out there. I made yeah, X-Men breakfast sandwiches. Uh, go ahead and cover it up. And that's it. I don't dress it. I don't put it in there because I don't want like hot mayonnaise or hot mustard because you're going to be heating these up on the fire. So you don't want to add all that. So be sure to go ahead and roll up all your edges here. Try to make it as tight as possible. We're going to put it in a Ziploc bag after this for transport just because I can't fold this tight enough to keep out water or anything. Uh, and it's good for transport and easy to cool. All right. So that's your important part. Now here's the other one. Like you put your chorizo and egg on it and then you... Add the sauce. It's that's the difference. That's I, I wanted to show you all that. I had no faith that you would grasp the difference. Er, I'm gonna eat that little bit. Of egg. So go <laughs> ahead and wrap this up. Try not to put a hole in it. If it is and it's small, don't worry about it. So all right, like I told you, now we're on the location at the campsite. Don't mind me. It's a little bucket chilly. So uh, let me show you how we reheat these at the campsite. So first of all, you're gonna need a fire. Uh, we lucked out. We got this fire ring thing with this grill doodad in the back. Uh, we were just gonna put it on one of the logs in the fire. This is my square sweet chunk who said that he could just move the fire that we had under the grill and use that, which sounded good. So I let him try. Uh, don't mind his outfit. We're not cultists or anything. Uh, we're LARPers and we were at a campsite, so it just didn't feel right to not wear a car. Uh, you can tell my squires learned from me and almost catches himself on fire trying to do this. Uh, <laughs> after a while, uh, it was a bad idea. We had to go with plan B to just put some charcoal briquettes under the grill to do it that way. Or you could get more wood and get it all cooked up, but he kind of killed that. So this is my... <laughs> <laughs> the square. This is Chuckles. He's just showing us how you can take charcoal briquettes next to a loaded fire and not uh, catch yourself on fire with the bag. Now this is us totally being safe. Uh, this is Neva. This is the square. Neva going to show you how to use uh, charcoal lighter without blowing yourself up. They wouldn't let me near the charcoal lighter. Uh, so get your charcoals nice and warm. They'll start to gray around the edges. So you're just heating these up. Just go ahead and take these, put them directly on the grill above it. If you got a grill, just put them on the grill. If you got a fire, like I said, you can just put them on the log as long as you have a way to retrieve them without using your hand. So put them on there, check them every five, ten minutes, see if they're nice and warm. If they are, I burn, ignore my pants. And that's it. Like, this is breakfast that was enough for, like, six or seven people. Now, this is going to go for a while, and I apologize, because uh, we don't have an outro. So, I'm just going to keep going on here. So, each one of these, like I said, with the bacon and the sausage were the big uh, things. The bacon itself took up over half the budget on the other one. So, uh, 
this made six and which is relatively easy for eight to ten bucks depending on which one of these you're doing the sausage or the bacon and we're easily able to heat up out of the thing even with uh, adding the charcoal into the into the budget it worked out perfectly guys so go ahead and try this be sure to let us know what you think if you would do it differently if you'd like to see it differently let us know you can also find us on social media uh at the uh, live between paychecks kitchen and uh at uh, facebook pinterest patreon shout out to our patrons thank you very much for being there for us we appreciate that you can also find us on instagram at living between and as an outro because i forgot to film one i'm just going to leave you with a little bit of a film of the crew enjoying the breakfast everybody complains that we never show how we eat these so uh here you go